I'm back in street clothes because I didn't think you wanted me to teach in my Halloween costume. Hey, welcome on in here. I am Lisa the Ukulele Fool, foolishly believing that Halloween songs and the ukulele go together. If you're not new here, welcome on back. And if you are, I hope that you would subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell. And all y'all hit that thumbs up. Let's get down to brass tacks. To do Sally's song in the original key, you're going to need an F a G and an A minor, and I'm going to assume that you already know those. You are also going to need a D7, and I suggest that you use the Hawaiian D7 because we move through that just so quickly. The Hawaiian D7 or the Easy D7 moves right into a G, and it just makes so much more sense to use that two-finger D7. You are also going to need an E minor, because this is in the key of E minor, and a B7. Lock your fingers into that shape and move them all over to the B7, just like that. This song is light and beautiful and sad. And so in order to keep that flavor, let's do a finger picking pattern, one that I call three versus C. It sounds like this. thumb on the G string, index finger on the C, middle finger on the E string, and ring finger on the A string. Each finger stays right on those strings. What I do is, why it's three versus C, is I don't use my index finger, and I use these three fingers to pluck my string. The thumb goes down, and these two fingers go up, so it's kind of like a pinch action. Then the C string on the index finger is taken by itself and you rotate between those two going, or alternate is another good word. It takes some timing and coordination to get this even and smooth, so be patient with yourself. Just hang out, channel your inner Jimi Hendrix and just kind of play around until it feels like second nature. When doing the finger picking pattern, you play the chords and, and do the finger picking pattern. How many times do you do each finger picking pattern? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'll talk more about this in the history nerd section. You do each pattern twice. One and two and except when I've got the chords in yellow, and then you only do one, like D7 to G. I have that color code and play along, and I also have it in my chord charts. So grab chord chart down below and become one of my patrons. Keep this channel going, it starts at $3 a month. You can have two live sessions with me each month, even at that level, and then I have group lessons and all kinds of fun things offered for you. Test your fluency. See if you can do the finger picking pattern with just the chords, not trying to incorporate the singing. Remember, if they're yellow, they only get one time through. One, two, and ready, begin.
pattern that I just went over seems too difficult, well, you know, you're not alone. I know that it's challenging finger picking pattern. It takes some time and patience to work that up, but why not just do some single down strums like this? I sense there's something in the wind that feels like treacheries at the Like that. Just make sure that when you're looking at the chords, if it's yellow, it's only going to get just one down strum. Everything else is two. You got this. I do love my music history, but first I'm just going to throw in a little music theory for you. This song is really unusual because it has mixed meters. That means that the beats go in groups, and that's a meter, and instead of having regular groups, it has irregular groups. This moves in groups of four, but then every once in a while you get a meter of two beats. And I think it does a wonderful job of giving this song kind of that off, unpredictable, kind of creepy, like things aren't really solidly settled, you know? Not if this is not a rock and roll tune. Danny Elfman has been a film composer for a very long time. Um, I first encountered him in the band Oingo Boingo. I, I loved them when I was a lot younger. Of course, he was a lot younger too. The first time he came to my attention as a film score composer was with the Batman movies, so yay. There was a rumor going around about Danny Elfman back in the day, and I helped perpetuate it that he didn't read music. Well, you know, Ah, oh, that was when the internet was young. Or maybe it wasn't even around at all. I don't know. He does read music. He had started off early in music after deciding that music was the route that he wanted to go. He does use the services of arrangers and other musical minds to bring these film scores to life because that's a daunting job in general. And most film composers use arrangers to help bring the, all the instruments in and have everything just all lining up as they hear it in their heads. Let's move on to the plate law. One, two, three, four. I sense there's something in the wind that feels like tragedies at hand. subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. And if you'd like to support this channel, consider supporting us on Patreon, only $3 a month, and get a lot more live access to my instruction and mentorship. <laughs>